everyone you're welcome back to my channel my name is Sinka in today's tutorial we're going to be making this dress I was attracted to the sleeve just the sleeve but then you know me now I will have to illustrate everything for you so that you can see the outcomes that I can wear and rock it for you to see so if you're new to this channel please kindly take a moment to subscribe and to my old subscriber you're all welcome back I love you if you have, you, if you have not clicked the notification bell please kindly do that now so that you'll be notified anytime I upload a new tutorial and always give the video a thumbs up so just click the like button and let's get started I'm going to be folding my lining into two cuts. I'm going to be drafting this on the lining first. Then after that, I'm going to be using the lining to cut out the main fabric. So I'll be ruling my guideline to have a starting point. I'm going to measure all my vertical measurements. So first I'll measure the length of my ham hole, my nipple point, my under bust length, my waist length, and half inch seam allowance. Then I'm going to extend all the lines. So this is the guideline, which is going to be our shoulder. This is the length of the ham hole, which is going to be our chest line. This is the nipple point. This is the under bust. This is the waist length and half inch seam allowance. So that on the guideline, I'm going to measure my shoulder divided by two. My shoulder is 16 divided by two. That will be eight inches. So you start from the folded edge. You measure the eight inches. Then you really straight to your chest line. You come to your folded edge again, you come to this point again, then you measure 3 inches inward starting from the folded edge. Then you come to the tip of the shoulder here, you measure 1 inch downward so that you can slant the shoulder. So you connect these two points together. And after that you add your seam allowance to this line, half inch seam allowance. On the chest line you input your bust circumference measurement divided by 4. My bust circumference measurement is 40 divided by 4, that will be 10. I'll put 10 inches. Then I'll come to the waistline. I will input my waist circumference measurement divided by 4. My waist is 32 divided by 4. That will be 8 inches. I'll mark it. Then I'll connect the points together. I'll come to my shoulder drop here. So I'll measure to my chest line and then I'm going to locate the mid arm hole. Locate the mid arm hole this way. So at this mid arm hole, you are going to come in by half inch. Then you connect it back to the shoulder tip this way. Come to your nipple point. Then on your nipple point line, you measure your nipple to nipple distance divided by two. My nipple to nipple distance is eight inches divided by two. That will be four. Then I'm going to add half inch to that measurement. So four plus half, that will be four and a half. Roll it straight to the waistline. Then from this nipple point, you connect it to the mid arm hole. Hope it's clear. Then the next thing now is to put our dart. So on the waistline, at this side of this line, you measure half inch for your dart. Then you roll it straight to your under bust. And then from your under bust, you connect it to the nipple point. This way. At this other side, you're going to, to take two inches that you roll it straight to the under bust. Then from the under bust, you use the curve part of the ruler to connect it to the nipple point. Can you see? Then you come to the mid arm hole, you measure two inches downward, and from that two inches point, you connect it to the nipple point also the mid arm hole then you connect it to the nipple point using the curve part of the ruler as well so just position it and connect together like this then you're going to extend this line outward by two inches outside this line by two inches then you can finish your arm hole by just placing your ruler this way Touching this extension and touching the chest line. So the next thing you're going to do now is to replace your dart and then you had your seam allowance. So on the chest line, you measure the dart that passed through that point. Here I have half inch, so you replace it back. Then you put your seam allowance. 
then you come to the waistline you measure the dart that is there here i have two and a half you replace it and then you had your seam allowance then you connect the points together like this we are almost done then you come to the side seam here you go up by one inch and then you connect it back to the dart leg and connect it to the dart leg so the neckline is just a, a small round neckline so i'm going to be using three and a half for the neck width i'll use three and a half for the neck width and for the neck depth i'm also going to use three and a half then i'll connect these points together next thing i'm going to do now is to bring out the shape of my yoke from the mid hole, just get a sweet heart shape and bring it back to the, to the chest line. You can use the curve part of your ruler. This, is it. this part is going to be your yoke. We are going to be using this to cut out the Ankara fabric. But first you need to bring out your yoke and you are going to be replacing your yoke with your lace material. So I'll fold my fabric into two and I'll place my lining on top of it. And I'm going to be using my lining to cut out the main fabric. So I'll be cutting this out. So this is your yoke. You're going to be replacing this yoke with your lace fabric. So you keep it aside. So this is it. Don't forget to notch your under bust. So in case you're padding, that is where your wording is going to stop. But I'm not going to be padding this. I'm just going to be inserting my bra cup. I'm going to be fusing this with my interfacing. You're going to be replacing this yoke with your lace fabric. So you're going to be folding your lace fabric into two. And then you're going to place the yoke on top of it. Align it, let the center front align. Then you trace out the shape of the neckline, the shoulder, the armhole. But you're going to be adding seam allowance of half inch to this inner part of the yoke. The only place you're adding your seam allowance is just the inner part of the yoke. This, then half inch all around the inner part, half inch, half inch. You can do it by side too, half inch. The allowance is only at the inner part of the yoke. So, if you open your yoke, this is how it looks. So we are going to be cutting out the back through your guideline. The guideline you measure your waist length minus one inch. My waist length is 17 minus one inch. That will be 16. I'm going to be using one and a half for my zip allowance. So I'll measure one and a half. One and a half. Then I'm going to rule it. Then on the waistline, I'll go in by half inch and connect it back this way. This step is just to prevent zip from bulging at the back. Then you also go in from this line again by half inch and connect it back to this line. What you're going to do now, from the guideline, you're going to measure your, your armhole length. And then you extend the line. On your guideline, you're going to be inputting your shoulder divided by 2. My shoulder is 16 divided by 2. That will be 8 inches. I'll rule it straight to the chest line. Starting from this line, you measure 3 inches so that you can slant the shoulder. Then you come to the tip of the shoulder, go down by 1 inch. You connect the points together this way. You need to add your seam allowance of half inch to the line. So on the chest line you're going to input your bust circumference divided by four starting from this line you measure it my bust is 40 divided by four that will be 10 i'll measure 10 i'll add my same allowance 
On the waist line, I'll input my waist circumference measurement divided by 4, starting from this line. My waist is 32 divided by 4, that will be 8 inches. I'm going to be having 1 inch dart at the back, so I'll, I'll put 1 inch for my dart and then my seam allowance. Then I'll connect the points together. Then straight away you can finish your armhole. Place your ruler, place the cup part of your ruler, touching this line and touching the chest line. You get your armhole cuff this way. Right, so the next thing now is to input the neckline. For the front neckline, we use three and a half for the neck width. So it's going to be the same with the back. So the neck width is going to be three and a half, just as we use in front. Then the neck depth, this depends on your choice, but I'm going to be doing two inches for my neck depth. I'll connect the points together. Back is ready. You're going to be placing this on your fabric to cut it out. This is the back. Make sure you notch your zip allowance. And you also notch your dart position, but I usually notch my dart position together with the skirt so that it can be equal. Open it, this is what you have. The down part of the gown is just a straight pencil skirt, as you see me cut it here. Center panel. Then this is one side of the panel. So this is one side panel and this is the second one. So what you need to do is just to place them on top of each other. So place one side panel to the center panel, right side to right side, and then you're going to join together with half inch allowance. When you're done with one side, you will also join the second side. So place it on top of center panel and join together again with half inch allowance. You start joining from the waistline with half inch seam allowance. You notch it all around and then you iron I've ironed it and open my seam can you see so the next thing I'm going to do now is to attach my bra cup to the lining that this is done the next thing now is to work on the yoke this is my yoke I'm going to be finishing the neckline with my bias so turn the bias to the wrong side and top stitch so I'm done with the neckline so the next thing now is to attach it to the main fabric so you're going to be attaching this yoke to this place all right so the first step is for you to notch the center notch and also notch the center of the yoke place them on top of each other right side to right side and then you pin it When you get to the middle, you keep the needle in, then you rotate the fabric and then you sew across to the other side. This is how it's looking. The next thing you're going to do is to use your lining to turn the yoke. So first thing I'll do is for me to open it this way and I'll pin the yoke on the body. So that when I'm sewing, it's not going to be getting into the same allowance. So just drag the yoke out of the way very well and pin.
do the same thing to this side so pin the yoke away this way so that you can see your seam allowance very well can you see this is my seam allowance so you place your lining on top of it right side to right side and then you are going to stitch together so you stitch it together following your former seam allowance the main fabric is on top the lining is underneath the yoke is in between the lining and the main fabric and I'm following my previous seam line. So when you're done, you notch. You can take out your pin. Nice and neat. Pretty, huh? Can you see it from the wrong side? So this is it. It's ready. So the next thing you have to do now is to join this upper part to the skirt part. So you're going to be attaching fabric to fabric and also lining to lining. So ensure your data are on the same line and then you're going to join together with half inch on the waistline. So I'm done joining it together. So you also join lining, lining to lining. So place it together again, right side to right side. And you join with half inch seam allowance. So I'm done joining lining to lining and body to body. Is to flip it to the wrong side this way. Flip it to the wrong side this way then you join together at the M line so just drag it and match them together at the M line then you join both the lining and the main fa fabric together with half inch allowance so when you are done then you come back to the armhole side this way can you see match the lining and the main fabric together again starting from once Starting from the beginning of the side seam at the ham hole side, you close the side with half inch allowance. You do the same thing to the second side. So I'm done. So from the ham hole area, this little opening here, you see the two sides, you can see. So from one of them, just bring it out to the right side. Bring it out to the right side. So that's it. It's ready so you take it to the ironing table and then you are going to iron then you keep it aside and walk on the back the back the first thing you are going to do is to sew in your dart we already know our dart position so sew it accordingly your dart stop one inch below the armhole okay. so I'm done stitching him my dart on the lining as well so I'll keep it aside and I'll work on the skirt part. First thing I'm going to do is to sew in my dart. You already know it, so sew it accordingly. The length of the back dart from the waistline is 6 inches. Join the upper part to the lower part. So match them together like this, right side to right side. And then you're going to join together with half inch allowance you do the same thing to the second side so i've joined it together on the waistline what you want to do is for you to place them on top of each other right side to right side but on the waistline you measure down nine inches and you make a point and you go down to the hem of the dress from the hemline you measure upward the length you want for your slit from the hemline i would like my slit to be 22 inches from the hemline so from the hemline i'll measure 22 inches upward and i will note the point of the sewing machine from this nine inches below the waistline i will join it to where i want my slit to stop using my zip allowance i had one and a half zip allowance so i'm going to be closing it with one and a half 
allowance. Follow the shape as it appears and close with one and a half. And a half. Then when you are done, you're going to be inserting your zipper. I'll go ahead, I'll do that. One and a half. You are going to be doing is to attach your zipper so open your fabric to the good side open it to the good side and then you are going to be placing your zipper on it your zipper is going to be right side to right side with the fabric so you attach your zip so i'm done inserting the zipper can you see so the next thing you are going to do now is to turn it with your lining. So the next thing you are going to do now is to join front and back together, right side to right side. And you are going to be attaching your sleeves when you are done doing this. I'm done attaching the sleeves so the next thing I'm going to do now is to close the side of my dress using my measurements So that's the end of the tutorial for today if you have not subscribed to this channel yet please kindly subscribe and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one bye